Hey, it's Al. How you doing? I, I'm putting this together for you ninjas. I want to show you how to operate your six-figure extended stay rental business without feeling frazzled and how to maintain it for free. So what I found as we grow in our portfolios, we've kind of somewhat have created a job for ourselves and that's not the point. We're trying to get more free time. So that's why I've done some, some thinking and this is what I want to share with you. Here's our marketing engine. Our whole goal is to get found people that we we're trying to attract those people doing extended stay assignments and then convert them into our customers and then get them to leave strategic reviews for us so that it helps us get found and that helps us convert people into our clients and then we want to systematically get them to leave a review for us at, at a special place that's going to help us get found <laughs> by the people that we want so that's the engine that's going to help you reach your financial goals. This is the engine. Specifically, what I want to talk to you about today is about Alfred Bucci. He was a professor back in, in the 1900s, back when the cars were first being invented. The cars were an amazing invention. And of course, there was some conflict when um, cars started going on the roads along with horse and, and buggies. There's all this conflict going on at the time, just like short-term rentals with uh, traditional rentals, there's going to be some conflict. So that's why it's really uh, apt to look at Alfred Bucci. Because what he did, he was looking at these cars and looking at these these engines and how they were working. We kept exhausting all this black smoke and all this um, heat kept getting exhausted through the tailpipe. And as an engineer, he knew that that was wasted energy. And that really, really bothered him. He's like, this, this, this can't be right. We're supposed to be optimizing the system. So the question he was working on is, how can you capture more of the wasted potential? He didn't like that wasted potential going out of the car. So an engine is something like this. With There's something like this that has pistons in it. Then those pistons um, move an axle and that turns the wheels. That's the thing. And there's this little explosions that go on in, in the engine. There's each engine may have four four or eight or twelve pistons in there. Okay. Let's take a look at that. The the piston itself it lets in a little bit of gas and a little bit of air and then it has an explosion just like you need um, some fuel and oxygen so you can have a, a nice fire. And you kind of instinctively know this from barbecuing when you want to um, get the flame up, get the temperature up, what do you do? You let in more air, right? And when you want to go for uh, dark meat or you want to go for indirect heat, low temperatures, you, you close off the air vent, you let less air in. So it's intuitive. So Alfred was thinking, wow, if we can get that wasted heat coming out of the exhaust to, to turn a propeller that actually draw in more fresh air to the piston then the whole explosion would burn hotter and we would be able to get more horsepower out of the car and that would do it we'd be capturing that waste heat that'd be good and that's what he did he invented the turbocharger which allows cars at that time to go 20 percent further it gave them more horsepower more miles to the gallon it's the single most important invention uh, uh, on gasoline engines, the turbocharger. Now here's some of the benefits to the engine. It's, it gives it more horsepower, so a smaller engine can do more. Can A smaller engine can get you up a steeper hill. And it gives you more miles to the gallon, which is always good. That's going to save you money-wise, right? And it, you need less frequent stops to fill up. So that's going to save you time. Now, what does that mean for short-term rentals? It means that a smaller portfolio, if you had a turbocharger, would give you more money, okay, be more profitable. And a, if you, for efficiency's sake, like miles to a gallon, you would be more organized and you have less errors, okay? And, and it brings on more ease for you if you're efficient. And also, if I was gonna make the analogy between um, less stops at the gas station, well, a turbocharger would save you time. That's what we want. 
and allow you to stay focused on your genius zone where you're gonna make the most money and, and not being focused on things that don't make you money and just causes inefficiencies. So here is a, a diagram of the whole short-term rental business and it, it takes you all the way through what you guys have done. You, you've you started, you got my course, and if you had a, a rental, then you went one way you start furnishing your own rental. If you didn't have a rental, then you went a different direction and you started with rental arbitrage. But we all got down to here where you, we after the place was furnished, we welcome our guests and we get paid, right? And then we do something while they're still there. <laughs> and then uh, we try to get great reviews and then we do the whole thing again. We, we welcome new guests and we, we get paid and we get great reviews and we do the whole thing, the whole engine. But I want to focus right here on this spot. This right while people are in your unit, what you should you be doing? That's the place where we can uh, add a turbocharger. That's where we can focus on our marketing, how to grow in our social media and doing things strategic to get better leads. So here's some questions for us, just like Alfred was focused on the question. Our questions are, well, what, what is your potential? How much can you, how much can you earn off of one place? And then how can you capture more of the wasted potential? <laughs> and then here's another question. How can you grow your business and your time freedom? Because it's really important that you have your extra time as well. So we have to optimize on cash flow and your free time. And how can you do it for free? Now, what do I mean by free? Let me, let me drill down on that. What I mean by that is that the profit that you, of, of what you're doing is is more than the cost so that it uh, washes out. So that, that, that you create some extra profit and that extra profit is more than what it costs you to create it. So then it's a, it's a wash, it's free to you. There's no cost to you, okay? With that definition, let's move forward. Well, how can you operate for free? How can you run your corporate housing company for free? Now, the backdrop to all this is that you need about five units to do this to, for it to really be free. So what you can do is you can sell additional things to increase your profit. And the next step you can do is you can reduce your operating expenses and that it also increases your profit. And then you, the third step is to use the extra profit to pay someone else to do steps one and two, okay? So we're bringing in some extra money and then we're using the extra money to pay someone to, to um, operate for us. Let's take a look at step one, increasing your income. Here's some things you can do. You, you can strategically increase your rates. As soon as you get booked, you can bump your rates and um, see if you can get higher rates each time. That's something you want to build into your, your business. And the next thing is, if, if there's a gaps in between your bookings, you can try to sell those too. You might want to discount them and try to sell them. Ethan Cook gave me that idea. I think it's great. And, and then you want to schedule in business growth activities too. That's something that will, will increase your income. Let's talk about those. Those are in that new book of mine about the handbook like on day four you may want to, of, of the month you may want to uh, email past clients and um, and start marketing to them bring them back or stay top of mind on day 12 you may want to um, ask your clients to who's currently staying with you to what they like about the unit and to take a selfie and hashtag your that's going to give you some marketing materials that you can use to get found and to help convert people over. And then the midst day gift, I talked to you guys about introducing a $5 gift card to delight a, a person and who's currently staying with you, one of your clients. And then once they're excited and say thank you, you ask them to give you a review at a strategic location. And then um, on day 16, you may wanna keep your eyes on the local city council and find out what, what businesses are coming to town and what projects, big construction projects are been awarded so that you can market to them. Those are some things that's gonna help you increase your income. So the next thing, step two, is to reduce your operating expenses because that's gonna increase your profits. Let's talk about how to do that. Well, vacancies are your biggest loss, right? 
So if you can reduce your vacancies, you can increase your profits. So I always recommend that you defray the cost of hotels for up to four days. So someone who wants to start within four days of when someone leaves, that you may give them $25 per day to stay at a hotel until that unit opens up. That will reduce your vacancies. And you want to keep your calendar organized because there's all the self-inflicted errors. If we, if we have one calendar that's blocked and another calendar that, that when it should be open, then we've just in, endured suffering a vacancy that we shouldn't because our online travel agencies don't reflect that we have something to sell. And there's this, this really good word to focus on. It's called co-opetition. And that means to, to collaborate between competitors, your competitors, and hopefully get some a mutual benefit for everyone. And do this in a way that doesn't harm our customers. Because if you, if you cooperate with your competitors and you harm your customers, that's collusion. That's illegal. That's a crime. You don't want to do that. So you want to do things that benefit you but don't harm your, your customers. And that's like sharing expenses, buying things in bulk, sharing deliveries of things, okay? And for me, that really, this word really got me thinking that we should be sharing a virtual assistant and that would reduce our costs. Because if we all do the same thing, then we can drive our costs down. And even though we're not competitors, we're in different markets, but even if we were in the same market, it would drive our costs down. So here's the three things. Here's a summary. We want to, we want, these are the things, uh, how you can operate for free, free up your time, and really grow your furnished rental business. If you if you sell it, some additional things, if you reduce your expenses, you're going to make a, a little more profit and use that profit to pay a virtual assistant to do do those things. Let's take a look at the virtual assistant part. It's a typical virtual assistant. You can get them on Fiverr, Upwork for around four dollars an hour. You can get a good one, college grad in the Philippines, and it speaks um, good English. And if you have them working uh, 20 hours a week, half time, that'd be $320 a month. So your opportunity cost, if you have five units, and this is really perfect for people who have five units and more, five extended stay rentals and more, is if you can reduce a vacancy from each one of those five, one per month, so that you can eliminate one day of vacancy, then you can pay your virtual assistant to do things and free you up. The, the value of that is $350. So here's the thing, the, the cost of a virtual assistant, if you have them on the right task, is $320, but your opportunity cost of, of cutting your vacancies is $350 per month. So basically, you can have them do things that will, say, will create a profit for you for sure, and it washes itself out. It's essentially free. That's what's mind-boggling about this. That's why I'm realizing that I definitely needed to write that manual about the handbook and, and get my virtual assistant to do things that would keep me from writing lease agreements and all those inefficient things and have them do business growth activities that makes an extra profit and then they pay for themselves. So that's what's really cool. That was mind-boggling for me. The whole summary, yep, those three steps you can operate for free. Now, I realized this when my, my family asked me to go to this aquarium in San Francisco, and it was the middle of the week, and I said, yeah, I guess I can go. I just picked up and left. I didn't shave or anything, but you can see there's my daughter with her mask, my my 18-year-old, and my, my beautiful wife. We were, we were all there. I did a drop of a hat. So would you mind me telling you about how I did this? There's something that, that I came up with that's helping me do this. And it's called Virtual Assistance for Extended Stays, VAs for Extended Stays. And it's my turbochargers. And, and it's a new subscription program that I created to, to manage the back end of your extended stay rental company. So we're going to use that handbook that you've heard me talk about. And it's also available on Amazon, the, the VA Virtual Assistant Handbook. They're going to create some digital assets for you, some social media that's going to help you rank higher in Google and be found. And it's going to help you organize and update your calendars and make sure that you don't have double bookings and losing money. And it's going to send you daily updates so that you stay on top of things and also correct any errors, um, perform those business building tasks that's going to help you make money, help you get found, help you convert people. And it's going to manage DocuSigns and all that whole onboarding process and lease agreements for you. 
to do your filing for you so you can stay organized and standardize some guest communications. We're moving into the direction of, of taking over your guest communications. The midday surprise, and that helps you get strategic reviews. So what's coming soon is we're adding on 24 hour support. So we're gonna be able to answer calls for you and um, respond to your text messages and your email uh, messages. So we'll be taking on that more for you and they'll be checking for messages once an hour, every hour. That's what's cool is that that's going to really relieve all the communication parts of you. Now, we talked about co-op petition and co-op pricing. That means if we all use the same person or the same team, they just get smarter and better and we can reduce our expenses across the board. And remember, we're trying to do this for um, less than 320. That means if you were trying to own just a half-time VA for just yourself, you wouldn't get around the clock service <laughs> and you wouldn't get all these other things. But you would expect to pay three twenty dollars, but my, my subscriptions start at two fifty per month. That's the co-op process. It's about twenty percent less than you can get on your own. To learn all the details about it and to sign up for this, go to VA's four ES, VA four ES dot com. That's H T T P VS four ES dot com. Let me know if you have any questions.